using the parlays against one another, right? And being able to get a little bit of juice can sig, I found to be a little interesting. Believe me, all the rhombuses and parallelograms are constantly trying to search and find out those things every day. It's one of the battles that you use, you know, as you expand the menu, you encounter new battles. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Giffen came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and you and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid To a Tuesday live right here on the early line on Sports Grid and all across that Sports Grid network. It includes sportsgrid.com slash watch, where you can find your favorite destination to consume everything all across the grid. He is Donnie Wrightside. I am Ben Stevens. We say thank you for joining us for these next three hours already up until 11 a.m. Eastern time. The NBA playoffs after a rare day off begins the conference finals tonight in the Eastern Conference inside TD Garden. It's the Boston Celtics hosting the Indiana Pacers. On the ice, we had one more Game 7 last night in a pretty full Monday slate in Major League Baseball where the hottest team in the bigs had a calamity in the ninth. Something unforeseen for Clay Holmes and the pinstripes all year long. A ton to get to, Donnie, over these three hours live right here on this Tuesday on the early line. Yeah, some big comebacks yesterday, too. If you were watching the first five innings and thought you had an easy first five-inning victory on the Houston Astros, think again with an unbelievable collapse in the fifth inning there. Also, as Ben was talking about the New York Yankees, crazy times all across the landscape. But we are going to focus on game number seven in the NHL last Oof. night. It's nice to get basketball back in our lives in the NBA tonight. We'll see how the Eastern Conference Finals gets underway. And away we go, BSS. So, Donnie, you know that you and I, a couple of puck talk guys, mm -hmm. you gave out a yeah. Stanley Cup playoff best yep. bet to end out the show. We live and we yeah. die with the Stanley Cup postseason. However, I cannot truly fathom what it would be like if I had a full allegiance to an NHL team, was a lifelong fan of an NHL team in a Stanley Cup playoff game, let alone a Game 7 where it came down to the final five minutes. Edmonton goes on the road to Vancouver and the Oilers knock off the Canucks in game seven something about those road teams the last 48 hours of postseason action winning a crucial winner take all game seven the Oilers victorious three to two but that's not the entire story in a series that was predicted to be very easy for Edmonton that was anything but six of the seven games decided by just a single goal. And last night, DRS, that was put on full display. The Oilers score all three of their goals in the second period, quieting the crowd inside Rogers Arena in Vancouver for the Canucks to score twice 
in the final nine minutes of regulation and a wild frenzy at the end where if your heart rate was not just spiking off the charts, I don't know how to describe it. Ultimately, the Oilers are victorious in a game seven on the road, booked as a minus 164 money line favorite with that 3-2 win. Uh, the oil derricks were flying and blasting off last night in Edmonton, Alberta, as you watch the fans back in their home arena celebrating inside and outside of that arena on an exciting game. And also, by the way, it probably three to nothing Oilers at the end of the second period. It probably could have been five or six to nothing, but Vancouver's goalie was absolutely sensational early to keep it somewhat close. But as we know, just like in the NBA, 20 point leads, 25 point leads, it always gets close at the end. And it certainly was that a three to two victory, a hard fought series by the Edmonton <sighs> Oilers, but the favorite. Favorites pulled through minus 160, minus 165 at game yeah. time. Looked like it was going to be a walk to victory there, but a 3 2 win nonetheless. Edmonton moves on. Total of five and a half stays under the Oilers' favorite in every single game. Yep. They advance with a victory in game seven to the Western Conference Finals, where the Dallas Stars await. The NHL's final four is now set out west. It's Dallas versus Edmonton for a spot in the cup final in the Eastern Conference. The Florida Panthers and the New York Rangers get underway in the Eastern Conference Finals tomorrow night inside Madison Square Garden for game number one. Now Major League Baseball elsewhere in New York, up in the Bronx, the Yankees entered the Monday slate as the hottest team in the bigs. Winners of seven in a row seemingly going to cruise to an eighth straight victory until the ninth inning happened. Clay Holmes has been the best closer without a shadow of a doubt in Major League Baseball all year for New York. He had not allowed a single run, a single earned run entering yesterday but the Mariners plate four against Clay Holmes, who blows his first save of the year, mm. suffers his first loss of the year as the Mariners come all the way back to knock off the New York Yankees with a 5-4 victory inside Yankee Stadium. You never know when you're going to need those extra runs here. Now, granted, the Yankees still should have won that game up multiple runs in the ninth inning with their closer on the mound. But I get back to a guy that really let me down last night, and certainly the Yankees as well. Giancarlo Stanton went one for four, so he did have a base hit. Came up twice last night. One with bases loaded, one out. One with first and third, one out. Two down, two double play ground balls here to end innings. You pick up a single, you pick up an extra RBI there. Maybe the Yankees win that game, and your boy DRS can cash in on a round robin. But neither one of those happened last ah. night. That's a nice win for the Mariners in a game that looked like it was just about over by the time the ninth started. Yeah, it certainly looked like that. An uncharacteristic outing out of Clay Holmes. Again, snaps that New York win streak at just seven games, but still the most wins in all of the mm -hmm. American League with 33 for the pinstripes. Elsewhere in the American League East, divisional duel at the Trop. And Rafi, Rafael Devers is having himself a historic week. A home run in six consecutive games for mm. Boston. That a franchise record in the long-standing franchise history of this Boston organization as the Red Sox go into Tampa, plank the Rays, and win 5 nothing. A great start from Tanner Houck on the other side for Boston. Talked about that yesterday. Hawk's been absolutely tremendous. I thought this game would stay under, and it did. Five to nothing final, only five total runs. Taj Bradley, an interesting line here. Seven innings pitched, six hits, and five earned runs, but 10 strikeouts and no walks. Imagine if I told you, Ben, a pitcher went seven innings, six hits, 10 Ks, no walks. You would have thought they won the game five to nothing, but they didn't here. So maybe some good things on the horizon for Taj Bradley, but at the same time, Tanner Hawk, four yeah. and five, man. Guy should be nine and oh with the way he's pitching. What a game it was last night in Indianapolis. A rematch of the season opener between the Sun and the Fever. It was back and forth. There were fourth quarter magic building in the building for Caitlin Clark and Indiana. Ultimately, at the end, Aaliyah Boston, last year's number one overall pick, had a great look at the cup could not convert as Connecticut holds off Indiana to win 88-84. But the Fever starting to find their footing, their second consecutive cover, despite an 0-4 start to this season. Yeah, they'll get there. They'll eventually get there. Got some good players on the team. And also the FanDuel Sportsbook with a great odds boost yesterday. You take a look at a double-double that we needed out of Thomas. Got 24 and 14 in that game. Then you needed yep. three three-point shots made from Caitlin Clark. What did she do? Three of seven cashed in that ticket. So profitable night overall if you were betting anything that had to do with the fever last night.
Alyssa Thomas, Dewana Bonner, and the entirety of the Connecticut Sun off to a 3-0 and perfect start. All NBA rookie teams announced yesterday. And on that first team, Victor Wembanyama, Chet Holmgren highlight the list. Jaime Hawkes gets in there. Brandon Miller, the second overall pick by the Charlotte Hornets. And Brandon Podjemski from the Golden State Warriors round out the first team. Fantastic. I guess that's what I can say about it, Ben. Fantastic. I really thought that would probably be your entire <laughs> response anyway. Fantastic. Quoted in headlines from Donnie uh-huh. right side. Yesterday at OTAs in Duval County, the Jacksonville Jaguars back on the field. Trevor Lawrence connecting with their first round pick in Brian Thomas Jr. That was part of the practice video I saw. And then after practice, Doug Peterson, the head coach of Jacksonville, saying he is hopeful that his organization and his young quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, can agree to a long term contract extension entering Lawrence's fourth year in the NFL general managers out there if you have a good player that you think is going to be a franchise guy sign him sooner than later because nobody's ever waited Ben and actually made the correct decision because it always costs you more money in the end get the deal done here save yourself millions stop delaying Jacksonville Absolutely so. It might be a record-setting deal. Could it surpass Joe Burrow's highest ever wow. quarterback contract at $55 million? Maybe. Jared Goff is now making $53 million a year. But still, with inflation at the quarterback position, it's not bad to get paid early. Devontae Parker, longtime NFL veteran wide receiver after nine years in the National Football League, announces his retirement yesterday. Anything else to say, DRS, except fantastic? Yep, swole Batman and skinny Batman scared that man away. We don't need you, Devontae. We don't need you. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. More on the early line next. devastating loss uh, to Georgia Tech where they made uh, significant coaching errors but uh, Miami with all of these changes obviously looking to churn over this roster and upgrade the talent level don't sleep on Rick Pitino listen at the end of the day the portal is the portal Mike don't matter where you came from it's where you're going and how much money can you get inside the transfer portal only on sports grid and now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm-hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid It's smarter to be on SportsGrid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Good things must come to an end. As we go back around a Monday slate in Major League Baseball, sadly, that was the story for the New York Yankees last night. The Yanks, the hottest team in all of MLB, entering Monday and this new week. Winners of seven in a row had that streak snapped last night up in the Bronx against the Seattle Mariners. Five to four, the victory for the M's. 
But that's not just the story. All good things must come to an end, including a 0.00 ERA for New York's closer in Clay Holmes. He had not allowed a single earned run all year long until last night. It is May 21st, and Clay Holmes had not allowed a single earned run. He gave up four in the top of the ninth to the Mariners as they rally for a 5-4 victory again, snapping that seven-game win streak of the Yankees. Yeah, crazy. That's what happens in Major League Baseball over a long season. We're not expecting closers to go out and not give up a run the entire season. And also in a non-pitcher's ballpark like we know in the Bronx, you're going to give up some runs, but that was pretty shocking to give a four in the top of the ninth inning. Was typically the blown saves or what, Ben? 3-2 lead, give up a two-run home run. I just couldn't get there. Not giving up four runs in the top of the ninth. And also keep in mind that Yankees bullpen where you gave up one in the eighth. So five runs over the eighth and the ninth innings here. Uh, Big game performances yesterday in there, though, throughout the Yankees lineup. Soto goes two for four, improves the 316 on his average. Aaron Judge, two for four, now hitting 271. And Verdugo, who was two of 12 in that Chicago White Sox series, goes three for five last night with three RBI. So good things happen in that Yankees lineup, even though it was a loss. And the only downtrodden part of that was Giancarlo Stanton, who the Yankees, instead of having four runs, should probably have seven or eight runs because he just kept grounding in the double plays when we just needed 300-foot fly balls. But I digress. Good win by the Mariners. Tough loss for the Yanks. Yeah, 20 previous appearances for Clay Holmes this season prior to last night. Not a single earned run, four in the top of the ninth against Seattle. Good news for the Yanks after the disaster. You still won seven straight games prior. Mm -hmm. You still lead all of the American League with 33 victories this year. And Aaron Judge and Juan Soto continue to deliver at the dish. Both going two for four yesterday. Soto batting well above 300. And as DRS mentioned, Alex Verdugo, three for five with three RBI. So that was a calamity in the top of the ninth. In the fifth inning yesterday in Anaheim, everything Mm. came crashing down for the Houston Astros. Houston, who had won eight of their previous 10 games entering, nine of their last 11, starting to find their footing. This game actually in Houston, excuse me, not in Anaheim, but in Houston. The Astros up big, entering the fifth inning. And then the Angels scored seven in the fifth, including three home runs to see it all crashing down. The Angels win nine to seven in Houston over the Strohs with Frommer Valdez on the bump. The Astros entered the game DRS as a minus 220 money line favorite. They lose outright to the Halos. Yeah, Valdez, five innings pitched, 10 hits, eight earned runs. This is the one I talked about to open up the show. It's one of those where if you are a first five inning better, you're isolating pitcher versus pitcher. You're feeling pretty good up six to one in the top of the fifth inning, only give up seven runs in that inning, and they tacked on another run there in the sixth inning for a nine to seven victory. If you like the RBI props in this game, you got them across the board. Altuve with three, Tucker stays hot with one, but also you take a look at that lineup here that doesn't look all that good for the Angels, providing nine runs of support in Houston that's one where the Astros like okay we're going to continue these good vibes here pick up series victories that one ends with a thump here you should have won that game let alone giving up seven runs in the fifth inning to not even win the first five innings yeah a pretty bad loss for Houston however when you look at where things are for the Astros starting to find their footing they had DRS as of May 8th been 12 and 24, 12 games below 500 so far, their valley of this season. Again, winners of nine of their last 11 entering last night. They entered 21 and 26. Now make that 21 and 27. The Angels starting to bottom out as well, but a victory yesterday. Los Angeles just 19 and 29 this season. Now we go to Kansas City where our guy Vinny P, but mainly his Royals, had a big day yesterday against Reese Olsen, who now drops to 0-5 this year, but only pitched two and two-thirds yesterday for Detroit, giving up just one earned run and five hits, but still suffering a loss as the Royals knock off the Tigers, winning 8-3. to KC, an ever-so-slight favorite, minus 112 on that pregame money line. Total of 8.5 does go over. He got hit with a line drive and had to leave the ball game here. Yeah. Tough scene because in the sixth inning, we're anticipating him still probably pitching. He gave up six runs in that bottom of the sixth. And you take a look at that lineup, the usual suspects. Garcia is a really good leadoff hitter. He gets an RBI. Our boy Vinny P doesn't actually get a base hit, but drives in a run. And then Michael right. Massey, of course, went three for four yesterday with an RBI. Pretty impressive lineup. And look at that. The Kansas City Royals right now. 
30 and 19 overall after that easy victory over the Detroit Tigers. Maybe this team is legitimate. I have an over of 73 and a half for KC's win total this yep. year. I am feeling great. The Royals did not hit 30 wins until July 28th last mm -hmm. year. July 28th, well before May 28th and Memorial Day, the Kansas City Royals have now hit their 30th win of the season. And when you look at the American League Central, the Guardians still maintain a game and a half advantage. Cleveland winning yesterday, but still, it's going to be tightly contested for that top spot. Now we go to Tampa at the Trop. The Rays booked as a home favorite, minus 122 on the money line. I'm mad at myself for not believing in Tanner Houck and Boston and just betting the Red Sox as a money line underdog because Tanner Houck, with the way he is pitching, should not be booked as a money line underdog even against the Rays. Rafael Devers hits a home run for the sixth consecutive game, the longest streak of an individual hitting a home run in consecutive games in Boston Red Sox franchise history as the Sox go into the trop and win 5 nothing. Yeah, you take a look at that first five batters in that lineup for the Red Sox. And again, a team we didn't expect all that much from now sitting at 24 and 24 on the season. And Tampa Bay, by the way, with that loss, 25 and 24. So those two teams chalking for position in the American League East. But Duran, Abreu, O'Neill, Devers, and Wong, take a look at these batting averages. 70, 269, 255, 284, and 350. That's pretty good here, man. Boston's hitting and now getting some pitching out of guys like Tanner Houck that we didn't anticipate being this good here. Maybe it could be a right. playoff run, maybe a wild card run for Boston this season. A couple of those teams in the American League East, like Tampa, like Boston, if Toronto resurfaces, maybe making a run to American League playoff contention, long way to go. More MLB recaps come your way next. devastating loss uh, to Georgia Tech where they made uh, significant coaching errors but uh, Miami with all of these changes obviously looking to churn over this roster and upgrade the talent level don't sleep on Rick Pitino listen at the end of the day the portal is the portal Mike don't matter where you came from it's where you're going and how much money can you get inside the transfer portal only on sports grid and now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i i don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers, it's automatic. It's every time, not, not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Elsewhere around Major League Baseball from a Monday night slate, we go late night to Los Angeles. The Dodgers hosting the Arizona Diamondbacks for the opening game of this midweek series between these divisional foes. A big third inning for L.A. Three home runs in the third, including a grand salami 
off the bat of one Frederick Freeman. And the Dodgers hold off the Arizona Diamondbacks with a 6-4 win. Quality start out of Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He picks up another win. He is 5-1 and one to begin this season as the Dodgers, as a minus 245 home money line favorite, knock off Arizona with a 6-4 victory. Yeah, Chacone's been bad pitcher this year for Arizona. Five yeah, innings bad. pitched, six hits, six earned runs. It's just what you get at him, one and four. He's got those high XFIP numbers, which means it leads to fly balls. And you saw fly balls from Freeman and Will Smith yesterday. It's been pointed out a grand slam from Freddie Freeman. But I got to tell you, look at that lineup here for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, Keitao Marte having a very good season, 291 right now. But Jock Peterson has been really good in that DH role, hitting 318, yep. cashed in on another RBI yesterday. But Corbin Carroll goes one for five. That was one of the better players in baseball last year hitting 191 on the season still not finding his way three strikeouts yesterday we expect these type of performance by the Dodgers just give me something decent on the mound our batters will be able to figure out the other team's pitcher six to four win this is what the Dodgers do 33 and 17 now on the season we're waiting for the Diamondbacks to sort of capture what they said last year down the stretch right. they just haven't been able to do it yet it's a tough division they're not getting the pitching they need right now that's all Yamamoto this year now 5-1 and one with a 3-1-7 ERA. Did allow seven hits and two earned yesterday in six in a third, but did strike out eight and had a solid performance registering the win. Freddie Freeman, that grand slam. Will Smith, a solo shot in the third as the same for Kike Hernandez for L.A. as well. To your point about Corbin Carroll, batting one 91. That's yeah. the reigning National League Rookie of the Year. It has not been the case this season in his sophomore campaign in MLB. A doubleheader yesterday in Atlanta to round out a four-game set that started on Friday between San Diego and the Braves. The Padres win game number one. A rally in the eighth. A four-run eighth inning. They win as a slight underdog. Cronenworth, two RBI single. Manny Machado, two RBI double in the eighth inning those the game winning runs so in the second leg of the doubleheader San Diego was looking for the sweep the Braves have dropped four in a row at that point Atlanta responds with a three nothing victory to snap the skid yeah, they really needed that second game because also they probably should have the first being up five to nothing early and saw six yeah. unanswered runs by the Padres in a six to five loss. That was a tough one. But Chris Sale's been very good for the Braves that we talk about. Very good. You now look at his record on the season, seven and one with a 2.22 ERA right now, certainly stepping into the mold that we missed with Spencer Strider going down with that elbow injury. We'll see what the Braves have. They're 27 and 17, but they avoided disaster. After that first game, boy, if they would have lost a double header yesterday to the Padres, yeah. we would have been asking a lot of of questions because you can't bury yourself all that much up against right. the Philadelphia Phillies right now but they got the split out of the doubleheader which is usually what's expected the Braves were booked as a hefty favorite with Chris Sale on the bump minus 240 on that money line total of eight and a half stays well under Chris Sale seven innings of shutout work only allowing five hits striking out nine he is seven and one this year is Chris Sale with an ERA now at two 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 a great start to this season at the top of that Atlanta rotation of course with the injury to Spencer Strider so the Braves still 10 games above 500 despite some slow play here as of late 27 and 17 they remain five games back and yet a hefty odds on favorite to win the National League East in front of the Philadelphia Phillies and these two teams still neck and neck it would seem at the top of the National League pennant odds plus 260 for Atlanta plus 135 for LA booked as the favorites but the Phils now less than a five to one price plus 470 it would seem Donnie the two at the top all year long maybe on their own peg I'm not sure they're in their own tier ahead of Philadelphia at this moment yeah, I don't think so at this time. And granted, we have a long way to go in the summer. Injuries happen. Yep. Teams play very good baseball. Teams go in the lulls. It's just what it is. But five-game lead for the Phillies this early in the season. We'll see how far they can extend that. The Texas Rangers come to town here to take on the Phillies at Citizens Bank Ballpark. We'll see if the Phillies can win yet another series just to keep the pace on the Braves. 34 wins, the most in Major League Baseball, which is crazy. The Phillies have had a long, illustrious history, mostly of losing for a long time. It's kind of interesting <laughs> to see them getting out to their best start ever in baseball history in Philadelphia. We'll see if they can continue at 70% winning percentage. I don't know if you can continue it, but boy, I would love to see it as a fan.
And even reaching the last two championship series in the National League, it was because the Phils rallied in the second half of the year and were great in the playoffs. Speaking of postseason action, to the NBA next. devastating loss uh, to Georgia Tech where they made uh, significant coaching errors but uh, Miami with all of these changes obviously looking to churn over this roster and upgrade the talent level don't sleep on Rick Patino listen at the end of the day the portal is the portal Mike don't matter where you came from it's where you're going and how much money can you get inside the transfer portal only on sports grid and now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The NBA's Final Four. After a night off in the association, we get back to action in the conference finals starting tonight. Inside TD Gordon in Boston, it's the Celtics and the Pacers. Of course, out in the Western Conference, it's the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Dallas Mavericks. Game one in Minneapolis is on a Wednesday. Game one tonight in Beantown. We will preview both of those matchups and look at the series overall. We do that now with our coach and his scouting report, James Young, JY, joins us on this Tuesday morning. JY, thank you for being here on the early line. Good to be on with you guys. I, the, the commercial break was interesting because all Donnie right side is trying to do is get me off my game with the Knicks. But Ben, I'm here. I'm focused. I'm ready to go. You, you know, the one thing that was never said in the commercial break to maybe keep Donnie right side in his corner is that the Knicks have the ultimate trump card over Donnie Sixers. New York, even shorthanded and banged up, beat up on Philadelphia in six games. Winning game six on the road in Philly, but we'll save that for a different day. JY, the NBA playoff bracket has reached the conference finals. Again, it's Boston and Indiana in the Eastern Conference Finals. It's Minnesota and Dallas in the Western Conference Finals. Of the NBA's Final Four, how many of these actual teams did you expect to reach this stage? Boston. Pretty much Boston. <laughs> that, that's, that's just about it. I mean, it, it, it's been a wild postseason, Ben, and one that's been marred by injuries, uh, erratic play by teams. Uh, but listen, Boston was the consistent. They were the team that was the best team in the NBA throughout the regular season. I thought that the Minnesota-Denver series was going to be a, a, a slugfest, and it was. I got it wrong. Um, and, you know, I was concerned about – uh, OKC, but I thought there was going to be uh, the Clippers that were going to be at this spot. So uh, shocking turn of events, but that's the great thing about the NBA is 
uh, you get hot at the right time. You got a couple of stars. You got great coaches, and you give yourself a chance to win. Yeah, you know, I agree with that, too. And you take a look at the way the NBA landscape is. Nobody really cares a couple of years ago when you say, like, well, who did you actually play in the finals where Milwaukee won a championship basically because teams got injured along the way? You take a look at the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to remember, like, hey, Boston's going to win a championship. They finally won it. Yeah, but it was an easy run through the East. You still got to play a really good team in the West in the finals and handle your business. So if we take a look at that Western Conference finals, which is going to be absolutely tremendous, you take a look at Minnesota and Dallas, these lines have been fluctuating back and forth, even coach in the last 24 hours we saw the Timberwolves as high as a minus 180 dipped to as low as around a minus 150 now we're back to a minus 168 with home court advantage for the Timberwolves set us up for this series number one coach on how these two teams got here and what we can't anticipate out of this series well I think the series is going to be absolutely tremendous if you look at you know Dallas how they've got here uh it was really the acquisitions during the the midseason of getting PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford to kind of shore up the defensive problems that happened Jones has taken the next step Hardaway Jr after a rough start with injury has started to come on but also the player Derek Lively has been really really good I think him coming off the bench has taken pressure off of this kid and him and Gafford has become a formidable one-two punch. So getting up by a Clippers team that seems to just can't get out of their own way when times get tough. And then going into Oklahoma City team, which really arrived the year early. Uh, very impressed by what I've seen out of Dallas. Minnesota was a team that just took a huge leap. I mean, let's be honest. Getting rid of D'Angelo Russell was the best thing that ever happened to this franchise because they bring in Mike Conley a couple of years ago. He stabilizes the roster. He gets them uh, to play defense. And the ascension of Anthony Edwards really becoming, I feel, a two-way force. And I'm going to be honest, he's kind of a likable guy. His comments, he's kind of funny. He talks a little trash, but he's got the game to back it up. But I think also Chris uh, Fitzgetting, Rudy Gobert, and Cat how to play together has been really, really critical. So this is going to be a dynamite matchup. It's not the matchup that we thought we were going to get, but it's the one we got, guys. And buckle up. I think this is going to be an outstanding series. Right now, I'll say it. I think this is going seven. And it could go either way. So to me, I like the series to go seven games. Best way to play yeah. it to me, we'll just take uh, Dallas plus the one and a half games uh, and play it that way. And don't let it go seven games because you got star power on both sides. You got good defense on both sides. You have underrated coaches on both sides. You have bench play on both sides. Guys, this is going to be such an intriguing matchup. And I would say this, we're arguably the three best one-on-one guards in the NBA in regards to creating their own shot between Kyrie, Luka, and Ann Edwards. Guys, it's going to be fantastic. From the odds perspective, J.Y., a great way of looking at this series. If we think it's going the distance, if we think we see all seven games in this best of seven, then Dallas plus one and a half, plus one and a half games, so either the Mavericks win the series or it goes to seven and Minnesota victorious in that seventh game. That would be a cash ticket, and we've seen some changing juice on that number as the series outright prices inch closer and closer as the public and the betting markets expecting this to be a grueling and incredibly competitive series so as we look at these two teams you highlighted what minnesota does well you noted what dallas has changed to get to this point in the postseason when you compare the two though jy what do you think is the key matchup to watch throughout this series that could dictate the outcome well, honestly, guys, it's going to be something that I don't think people are going to expect. It's going to be the, the top offensive player against who guards who. So when you look at Dallas, who in regards to and Luka Doncic, who guards Luka? Because you get a figure between McDaniels and Conley, who takes Kyrie, who takes Luka? That's going to be a critical thing. And then you go to the flip side, Jaden McDaniels, who has maybe been the MVP, you could argue – and that's what Anthony Edwards has said for Minnesota yep. because of his ascension offensively. He is going to have to guard, uh, obviously, as well. So it's going to be a really dynamic uh, uh, matchup here. And I think it's going to be something that's going to be interesting to see. Also, Derek Jones Jr., who does he end up on? Probably Anthony Edwards here. So I think you have really um, intriguing matchups to me. I think we start looking at it. If you start looking at series props, guys, I think Anthony Edwards – to lead the in scoring at plus 125 is where I'm looking. I know Luca is absolutely dynamic. 
But you could also get games where Kyrie's got to carry the load. He was much better in game six, particularly in the second half, being aggressive, looking for his shot. I think I look at Anthony Edwards at plus 25 to 125 to lead the series in scoring because I think he's going to really have to try and put this team on his back offensively to try and win this series. Western Conference MVP odds that you can bet on here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. We take a look at that graphic. Anthony Edwards at a minus 150 price. Luka Doncic mm. plus 165. Uh, Towns at 14 to 1 and Irving at 16 to 1. If we look at some of those, because we talked about this yesterday. Is it better off, Coach, to get maybe slightly better pricing if you just take the superstar player to win? Or are you just more comfortable to say, you know what, I don't want to get burned by anybody else winning this. I would just rather pick the team that actually wins the series here. What are your thoughts on these MVP odds? Well, I think the, the issue you have here is if you look at it's minus 168 right now on, on FanDuel for Minnesota to win. I think they win the series in seven, but then and is minus 150. But here's the thing. What happens if you look at like game number six where Ant struggles in a closer game and Carl Anthony Towns goes off and has a big series? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't look at that. I would just take Minnesota minus 168 if you want to just take them to win the series. And then if you want to put a small amount of money on Cat to win most outstanding for MVP of the Western Conference Finals as a value play. That's the way I would play it because then if you go minus 150, you may lose out if Cat has a big series. It's better off to go the other way. There are 15 cents of difference from the price of Minnesota winning this series or a little bit less than 20 cents, I should say, for Minnesota winning the series to the number for Anthony Edwards. Minus 168 for the T-Wolves, minus 150 for Ant to win the Western Conference Finals MVP. There are 23 cents of difference for that same story on the other side for the Mavericks as the underdog or Luka Doncic with the second best price to win the Western Conference Finals MVP. Game one tomorrow night in the Twin Cities. Minnesota at this moment, a four-point home favorite total for the opening game of the WCF stands at 207. Now to the Eastern Conference Finals. We do that up next. devastating loss uh, to Georgia Tech where they made uh, significant coaching errors but uh, Miami with all of these changes obviously looking to churn over this roster and upgrade the talent level don't sleep on Rick Patino listen at the end of the day the portal is the portal Mike don't matter where you came from it's where you're going and how much money can you get inside the transfer portal only on sports grid and now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note of saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers, it's automatic. It's every time, not, not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place sports rage this late sort of night has let down written all over it it's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night it's smarter to be on sports grid yep. 
Eastern Conference Finals, a preview of the series, a look at game number one. Tonight in Beantown, it's the Boston Celtics, the NBA's best team for the entirety of the season. The NBA title favorites for the entirety of the season getting ready for the opening game of the ECF against the Indiana Pacers. And JY, when you look at this series outright price, it just indicates how heavily the odds makers favor the Boston Celtics. Minus 1,100. In fairness to Indiana, it was minus 1,250 yesterday, but minus 1,100 in favor of the Celtics. They are laying two and a half games in that series spread as well. I ask you then simply, will this series be as easy for the Seas as the odds makers expect? Yes. But I do think, as crazy as it sounds, I think Indiana covers the spread, and this may be the wildest take. I wouldn't be completely stunned if they stole game one. Because of the fact that Boston has kind of you know been let, resting a little bit, Indiana could ride the momentum of the Knicks series. They get up and down, fast pace, and we know this, guys. Boston will lay an egg at some point in the first three games. It's kind of their MO. They did it first round. They did it second round. Both of them game twos at home. Indiana as a team that shoots over 50% from the floor, the only team in the NBA to do that. I saw them. I, I still have nightmares of them hitting shots in Madison Square Garden from all angles, shooting 70, what, 73% in the first half of a game seven. You know what that means, Ben? They're not going to be scared at the moment. They're going to take their shots. Now, the problem with them is they can't defend worth a you-know-what, and they're actually playing a team once Porzingis gets back, when he comes back, and that it's finally healthy. So, Rubber's going to meet the road with Indiana. But I think they have enough that they can steal a game. I can't do the minus 1,100. If you want to go minus 2.5 games for Boston, go ahead. If you just want to go this one, one of my favorite bets, Boston up two games to one, even money. I think there's a game that Indiana steals in the first three, they closed it out in five, so you can take Celtics 2-1 at even money right now in FanDuel. When we took a look at this uh, to sh you know, open the show yesterday, I had the same opinion, Jay. Well, I do think it's an eerie se easy series win for the Celtics, but there is something to saying to yourself, okay, it's a minus 180 price, let's just say, on the series. You take it, maybe a guy or two gets injured on the Celtics. You can live with that. The one thing you can't live with is a minus 1,100 price where it's like, yeah. hold on, there's still two NBA teams, and we've seen injuries happen multiple times this season already in the playoffs to key players. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be the downfall of the Boston Celtics, but that price point doesn't measure up. I think you're smart here betting the series is a different way to say if you think it's going to be an easy victory lay the minus two and a half take them to win in five games take them have a two to one league because i agree with you here i do think the indiana pacers is going to be game but also the approach to the series for us as you brought up coach not much defense here played in indiana and quite frankly over the first two series that we take a look at with the boston celtics no offense for miami not a lot of offense for cleveland at least now you get offense out of indiana how do we approach the tempo of the series because even looking at line number one here or game one i should say on the total it's 221 and a half we should be getting points routinely, each team over 100 on a game-to-game -game basis here. Obviously, yeah. If you look at the track record of the games that they've played during the regular season, 129, 124, mm -hmm. 133, 131. The outlier, 118, 101, 122, 112, and then 155, yeah. 104. Here's the thing, folks. When Indiana's going to do what Indiana's going to do. See, if you look at what that happened in the Knicks series, the Knicks had to try and slow them down because they were a mass unit by the end of it. So to me, Boston has the guys that can get up and play and play up-tempo pace. They have the depth when you bring guys like Hauser and Pritchard off the bench that they can keep the game going and flowing offensively. Indiana's going to run because that's the way Rick Carlisle's going to play it, and you can't change your stripe when the playoffs start. So I think points are a point. It's interesting that it's 221 and a half as compared to, what, 206, 207 and a half in the West. I think game one goes over. I think it's going to be a lot of points. Yeah, when you look at that total 221 and a hook, it's because of how the Pacers play. We'll get a deeper breakdown into this opening game tonight inside TD Garden, looking at the players that will affect the outcome of this first game of the Eastern Conference Finals in just a little bit. But, J.Y., now we go individual perspective for this series overall. 
when you look at the odds to win the Eastern Conference Finals MVP, named after Larry Bird, the Celtics really are the front of this table. Jason Tatum, hefty favorite, minus 220. Jalen Brown, plus 350. If you believe the Celtics are going to win this series, maybe doing so in as little as five games, who would be your bet to win the Eastern Conference Finals MVP award? It's going to be Jason Tatum, but I can't bet that at minus 220. I, I just, I don't think, I don't see the value with it, Ben. Uh, and this is a spot where Jason Tatum should step up and do it. Now, when you look at defensively, you know, who's going to guard him? It's, you know, probably going to be Pascal Siakam. But Siakam's going to have to worry about scoring because you figure Naismith, because how he played on Brunson, probably goes on to Jalen Brown, right? So I think that's where you kind of look at it. So it's Tatum to me, but I can't bet that. To me, when you start looking at the market, where do you want to go? You got to start looking at some of the props. For instance, to me, uh, most threes made, I like Derek White at plus 170. Why? Just look at what Dante DiVincenzo did in the last series. I think he's going to have the shot volume. I think you're going to put Halliburton on him. Halliburton falls asleep defensively at times. And Derek White can get loose. Derek White at plus 170 to lead this series in three-pointers made. By the way, Coach, if we're looking at this series prices here on those MVP odds, let's you, so usually from a Celtics perspective, and rightfully so, Tatum, Brown, right there, one and two. But if the Pacers were to force a game seven and possibly win this series, which player, from your perspective, would it be like, you know what, this guy put that team and that town on his shoulders? I, I would have to go, ready? I would go Siakam. Yeah, me too. Because I, yep. because if, defensively, Drew Holiday is taking Halliburton. So I think Drew's going to take him out. To me, it, it's it's going to be uh, Siakam, or if you want to really throw like a wild one, I don't see it would be Miles. Don't Turner. say it. I, oh, okay. I, I, you know what? We, we, we have going. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Nation, McConnell. I mean, <laughs> McConnell. I no, thought no, no. TJ McConnell was getting a shout no. to win Eastern <laughs> Conference Finals no, MVP. No, that's what. No. I, that's what I thought. Man. When JY no. said, "If you want to get wild, and you see TJ McConnell <laughs> with that tenth best price at three hundred and eighty to one, I thought Goodness. we were getting that's really, wild. really crazy. wild." Ooh. We look back on the New York Knicks, JY. Next. Oh, not the Knicks. devastating loss uh, to Georgia Tech where they made uh, significant coaching errors but uh, Miami with all of these changes obviously looking to churn over this roster and upgrade the talent level don't sleep on Rick Pitino listen at the end of the day the portal is the portal Mike don't matter where you came from it's where you're going and how much money can you get inside the transfer portal only on sports grid and now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note of saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
A moment to look back, filled with appreciation or maybe not quite getting to the point where people wanted it to be. We do that with our coach, James Young, JY, live right here on this Tuesday on the early line. And we start with JY's New York Knicks. They reached the Eastern Conference semifinals, the second round of the NBA playoffs for a second consecutive season, but unable to reach the Eastern Conference finals, which has eluded New York since the year 2000. JY, of course, the story for the New York Knicks in this postseason the injury bug and how shorthanded they were. No Julius Randle for the entirety of this playoff run. No Mitchell Robinson at the end of the first round. OG Ananobi gets injured in game number two. Josh Hart did not look right in either game six or game seven. And the final blow, not sure it really would have mattered for the outcome, but the final blow, part of the story, Jalen Brunson fracturing his left hand late in the third quarter of game number seven. When you look back on this playoff run, in the entirety of the New York Knicks season, how do you describe what you felt along the way? Uh, euphoria, and then pain, and then appreciation. Euphoria for a team that this is probably the best Knicks team, and I would say the most loved Knicks team, let's be honest, guys, since the mid-'90s into the late-'90s. Pain for what happened in game number seven and watching the team basically become a G League team by the end of it with guys that you never heard of playing big minutes. Guys like Alec Burks, who was terrible, but then had to step up and play for the team. But then appreciation for how much they fought, for the fact that, let's be honest, guys, OG Ananobi had no business trying to play Game 7. Josh Hart had no business trying to play Game 7. Mitchell Robinson came back way too early and rolled his ankle on that, I would say, probably cheap shot by Embiid. Julius Randle well, should have been out way earlier and stuck it out, Ben, because of the fact of him trying to play through pain. So to me, it's appreciation for this Knicks team, but it's an interesting spot for a team that overachieved again. Now comes the tough part. What do you do to take the next step? Because I firmly believe if you just think you're going to run it back, I do not think they're better than Boston with the same team. If Milwaukee can figure it out, what happens with Philadelphia? They're bringing another star. New York's has got to continue to make moves, including bringing, in, bringing back some of their free agents that were keys to their success this year. We'll keep it right here with the Knicks. I think it's intriguing offseason for them by no means, like they should be improving. But if we take a look at Jalen Brunson, he comes over to the Knicks. A lot of people say they love to play Madison Square Garden, can't wait to get to New York City, and then time comes for free agency, they shy away from it. It takes a strong player to dominate in that place. Brunson has done that. But you need to get him with a B. If you need an A and a B, a Batman and a Robin, who could that be? Because it's apparent. You have your superstar right now in Brunson. You got to pair him with another one. Who could that be, Coach? Well, here's the thing, folks. I think they're going to keep DiVincenzo and Brunson in the backcourt. Uh, so, to me, you're looking at the forward position and or the center position. Now, it comes down to this. Isaiah Hartenstein, two years, $16 million. Can only get $16 million next year. What do they do? Here's the tough part, folks. The tradable asset is the first guy that was willing to come to New York, and that's Julius Randle. What can you get for Randle if you re-sign OG and Anobi? You can move OG to the four, bring in a three, or keep OG at a three, go get a four. Paul George, intriguing, maybe old. Mikel Bridges wants to be a Nick more than probably any other Nick, but Brooklyn would be crazy to trade him. Brandon Ingram, I don't know if he can handle it. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to say, I know people want Spider mm -hmm. Mitchell, including my good friend Ben Stevens. I can't mm -hmm. go there I mean, yet. Donnie. Oh, Donnie. I mean, well, Donnie wants to just yeah, implode yeah. the locker room. That's all he cares yeah. about. That's a, he He's don't care the about watch. the Knicks. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, page six. Yeah, well, how about page one? Not going to happen. <laughs> Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. But here's the thing, guys. Brunson and Leon Rose has changed the game with New York. Why? Because they got James Dolan out of it. Stay out of it, Dolan, because this is where you come in and mess things right. up. Let Leon World Wide West handle it. You got a star. Go get a B. Mikhail Bridges, the Villanova mm. Knicks. Jay Wright might oh. come out of retirement mm. and oh. stop working yeah. on TV to be a part of Tibbs' staff if oh, yeah. Tom Thibodeau would even have 
him there. We were going to ask you about the Oklahoma City Thunder, but we'll save that, I guess, for another day. There's optimism in OKC. That's all that is important at this moment. Now we go to game number one. One more segment with JY to start our our second hour here on this Tuesday on the early line, I think. Actually, I don't know if it's JY. Anyway, we preview game one next. Oh, man. (laughs) JY, JY. (laughs) 